I invite you to stand and face the cross. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came in his glory to his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that we are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us go forth in peace in the name of the Lord.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors. Who is this King of glory? Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors. Who is this King of glory? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Palm Sunday, Sunday the Passion, is from the 50th chapter of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Christ entered once for all into the holy places by means of his own blood. Thus secured an eternal redemption. Therefore, he is the mediator of the New Testament. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his testament forever. The epistle reading is from the second chapter of Philippians. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now, 
is my soul troubled? And what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him, so that the word spoken by the prophet of Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe him. For again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart in turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for the fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that the, they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you.
The gospel reading as Jesus is preparing to go to the cross, he says this, my soul is troubled and what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? But for the, this purpose I have come to this hour, Father, glorify your name. This is our text. Will you pray with me? May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Time. Sometimes we have to make time. Sometimes we say we don't have time. Other times we do have time. Is it really ours to negotiate? Jesus had a lot to say about the hour in our reading this morning. And if we read the entire Gospel of John, we see that this is an important thing throughout. In fact, if you remember back to his first miracle when he was at the wedding in Canaan and his mother told him that the wine had ran out, Jesus said to her, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. What is this hour that Jesus is talking about and how important is it that it would come? Well, let's look a couple more places at the story where Jesus mentions the hour. In John chapter seven, Jesus' brothers came and they were trying to get him to move on. They said, leave here and go to Judea that your disciples may see the works that you are doing. For no one works in secret if he seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. 
for not even his brothers believed in him. But Jesus said to them, my time has not yet come. Later in the same chapter, they were trying to arrest Jesus there, but no one laid a hand on him because his hour had not yet come. John chapter eight, Jesus is in the treasury teaching in the temple near the treasury and they hear what he's saying, but it says no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. When we move on into John chapter 13, as this to say, there at the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, he sent his disciples to prepare that last meal, the New Testament. And then in John 17, Jesus spoke these words as he was lifting his eyes to heaven and he said, Father, the hour has come Glorify your son. Jesus seemed to be focused on this hour. What is this hour? What's going on about it? We had a couple of phrases in this reading that it's associating glory with the hour. But the funny thing is that it's a glory that's quite different than the glory that we might pursue. We had that at the very last verse. There were those people that wanted to believe in Jesus, but they were afraid of the crowds around them. They were afraid of the Pharisees. And it says, they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. Even Jesus' brothers and family wanted Jesus to show off his glory so that the world could see. And Jesus says, that's not the time. That's not the way. What is the hour? What was his purpose? Jesus was troubled when he was talking about this hour, and he says, this was what I came for. And when he told them that the Son of Man was going to be lifted up, they seemed to understand right away that that meant he was going to be nailed to a cross. And they said, but the Christ is supposed to live forever. How can you say he's going to die? Because man seeks after glory of man rather than the glory of God. Rich in things, but poor in soul. Sometimes we feel, fill our time with things that are more in tune with the glory of man than the glory of God. It's hard for us even to understand that Jesus could suggest that being nailed to the cross is a glorious thing. For to our eyes, it seems wicked. The Romans used the cross to terrify the people. But Jesus said this is the Father's plan for how the Christ is going to deliver the world from sin, death, and hell. That's a glorious plan, a glorious, loving, merciful plan. God would love the world so much that he would come among us, that he would let himself be lifted to the cross and die the death of sinners so that sin might be paid for, that we might be forgiven. The people waved those palm branches as Jesus was coming into Jerusalem and 
They were all excited about Lazarus being raised from the dead, and they were thinking, wow, what can we do with this Jesus guy? And Jesus said, I'm going to the cross for you. And God's glory is so much better than man's glory because possessions and power in this life are not worth comparing to mercy, to the love of God, to the glory of heaven, where we will see Jesus as he is, the light of the world, the lamb who was slain but is risen again, the God of grace and glory, the God of a glory that is gracious. All too often, human glory turns to vanity and pride, and we know that that is ugly in itself. God's glory turned to the cross is love and grace. Jesus was not afraid of the hour. He was not afraid of that task. Before the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross that he might be your savior, the one who forgives your sins, the one that says to you, come. There's another place in John's gospel where Jesus talks about the hour coming. He was talking to a woman of Samaria there by the well, a woman that had been rejected and neglected he said, the hour is coming when we will worship the spot, Father in spirit and truth. What glory to worship God, in his, to be in his presence, to know the truth of sins forgiven, to have the spirit working life in us, that we might truly be who he has called us to be that we might be bold like Jesus, that we might not fear the cross or the grave, but have the eyes set on the empty tomb, the resurrection and the life that is to come. Hosanna, save us, Lord. Glory in the highest. Time. Let us follow him. Amen. May the peace of God which passes understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
King of glory, Lord of hosts, make way for your blessed Son, forgive our sins, and renew our souls, that we may glorify him who died to save us. Lord, in your mercy, merciful Lord, you desire not the death of any sinner, but that all would turn in repentance to you. Bless the preaching of your gospel and the administration of your sacraments in mission fields around the world. Convert those who do not yet know Christ and sustain those who face dangers in opposition for the name of Christ. Bless and protect all missionaries as they proclaim Christ boldly in hostile places and surround their families with your care. Banish from our hearts all prejudice that might hinder our mission work here in our nation or abroad. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you sacrificed your own Son on the cross that we may be called your children. Increase the faith of all Christian fathers that receiving Jesus and trusting his atoning sacrifice, they may be enlivened to sacrificial love for those in their care. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, our King, your Son entered Jerusalem as the true ruler, ready to lay down his life for his people. Grant the same mind to those in authority over us that they would discharge their duty even for the least among us and so receive your commendation. Lord, in your mercy. According to your gracious will, O Lord, look on those who suffer illness or physical disability. Bless them with what is best for them according to your good and gracious will and strengthen their faith. Open our hearts to serve their bodily needs. Take into your care those who mourn the death of loved ones. Give them peace and comfort through your holy word. Lord, we lift up to you Jeremy and his situation. We pray that you would care for him and lead him to the joy of Easter. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, as your son once entered humbly into Jerusalem to cries of Hosanna, to send him to us according to his promise in the Holy Sacrament, that we may eat his body and drink his blood in repentance and faith for the forgiveness of our sins and in the unity of a true confession. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, show us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna in the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
truly good, right, and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might arise again, that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming again for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
My own eyes have seen thy salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, when loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.